Vaseline. All right, guys. <laughs> Let's go. It's time. It's time. Time to unchain my headset right here. Guys, it's time. It's the moment you've all been waiting for. It's the moment you've all been waiting for, ladies and gentlemen. It is the moment. We have four Zoomers versus Quincy Crew. And we have a Quincy Crew. You drool a little bit. We have uh, first two bands here. We have uh, Void Spirit and Ember Spirit coming out for former Zoomers. And we have Quincy Crew banning Furion and invoker gunner's only been playing invoker in his pubs i think it's the only hero like gunner used to be a one hero pool player right he used to only play the ember spirit so a little weird that gunner has banned his own hero pool because he is drafting it looks like and then quitsky was like oh big god he banned his only hero but he's been playing invoker let's ban that too now gunner has no heroes so i'm interested to see what's going to happen here because gunner has no heroes right i think he's been banned out already uh so interesting to see this decision making come out from the other team uh, Windrunner, I'm not really sure what position people play that. It's probably a 4, right? A 5 or a 4? Do you think it's a mid? No, it has to be. It has to be like a support. No way. Uh, I know that uh, Ocean has been playing a lot of Windrunner in his pubs. Um, we have the Willow follow-up. So probably there's two supports right there. I can't... Yeah, like I said, I've seen Ocean play a lot of the Windrunner. And also uh, Husky's played a lot of Willow. It's so probably the two supports right here for 4 Zoomers. I give it about a, a 7 out of 10. Not because so much that the supports are like very good together or whatever, it's that they're both very sexy. They're both very like, have you guys ever seen a rule 34 of Windrunner and Dark Willow together in a bed of tentacles? Like, I don't want to get too horny here, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying ladies and squares? Like, I'm gonna go watch some of that shit later. But uh, we have the clock right here from Quincy Crew. And uh, this, is a, this is a pretty solid hero. I think it's a pretty underrated hero, honestly. Uh, kind of fucks over a lot of other heroes, you know, forced to buy four Radiant staffs and whatnot. Bad. Hookshot goes through BKB, Legion very Commander. good. So we have the four and the three right here. We have the MSS Clockwork and most likely Easy for Light Cloud, Easy for Light Cloud, Easy for Light Cloud Legion Commander. Uh, we got a next set of bands coming up for four Zoomers. We have the, I don't, uh, if I had to give the edge to one draft at the moment, I would not do that because I'm going to take my time and do a real analysis of this game. Maybe you'll have like the low tier casters like Kyle Friedman dots for the melons. Like, like, oh my god, the Legion versus Dark Willow matchup is insane because of the terrorize and the duel. It's a guaranteed carry like that. And you maybe, but you know, I'm not going to sit here and build fake hype over shit that doesn't really matter. I'm going to sit here and give you the real fucking facts. I'm going to be a real one right now. I ain't going to fucking fool you guys with that fake shit. You have a Death Prophet ban and a Terrorblade ban coming out here from four Zoomers. Quincy Crew banning Terrorblade. I was talking to uh, Ritsu the other night, and I was like, uh, he was he was talking about Sammy Boy. I forget why we were talking about Sammy Boy, but he was talking about Sammy Boy. And I was like, yeah, uh, Sammy Boy's only hero seems to be Terra Blade plus Vengeful Spirit. Remaining. And it's because it's the truth, man. Uh, the only games I've really seen from four Zoomers that they've won Five convincingly have been the when they picked Terra Blade for Sammy Boy, and they had like a Vengeful Giant Spirit on Monkeys Man. Forever. So banning out the Terra Blade... Uh, seems like a really good choice because that's really the only hero I've seen them have success with. Uh, so yeah, uh, good band, good band. It's funny too because like uh, Legion's pretty Radiant good versus Terrorblade, I think. I think it is. Uh, yeah, so intro, you know, they kind of have a good hero versus it, and they ban it anyways, which really speaks to like how they think about four zoomers, how they feel about four zoomers carry position. Uh, we have a troll follow up. Troll is good versus Legion, but. Hero, uh, Troll isn't really seeing a lot of play these days, if I'm not mistaken. It's not a uh, hot Five pick, it's not a contested remaining. pick, so interesting that they went with the Troll ban. I guess just trying to secure Les Lau's lane a bit. Interesting, interesting. Uh, Legion is pretty good versus Willow, though, in the lane. You can uh, dispel the Bramble, dispel the Cursed Crown, so it's really nice for that. Shouldn't really risk dying too much. Dire um, team ban. Rana ban. I think CCNC played Marana mid uh, yesterday, did he not? I think so. Mason's insane. Well, Lukey has no cloud. Easy clap. Uh, sorry, Lucas, that was too much, man. Uh, I hope to see your OnlyFans soon. Okay, Mason, you're getting off topic here. Uh, yeah, Quincy, uh, Quick Callahan, I believe, played the Marana mid. I have mixed feelings about Marana mid. I think it brings really good utility and tempo to the game. Like, uh, obviously, all of her skills are just like. Super good in team fights if used correctly. Arrow, you know, hook shot into arrow, hook shot, uh, cogs, hook shot into arrow is like you can't really avoid it, right? You got the you got the chainsaw, you got the hook, you got the cogs, you got the arrow. If they didn't get off the BKB before the hook, 
then they're gonna get stunned. Uh, so yeah, they don't really have save either. Like they have they have terrorize, but they don't really have save. So if they get off that chain stun, then the Quincy crew picks up like a BKB carry. It follows it up. Like it, it's just guaranteed like damage. It's guaranteed setup. Radiant so that's good. Kick. Also Legion dual plus you know dual plus arrow too. Uh, so that was an interesting map for Zoomers. We have the Phoenix coming out of Quincy crew. Is this five Phoenix right? Probably a five Phoenix. I think Phoenix is a pretty underrated hero. I think this hero does a lot of damage. He does a lot of damage, and he gives you, you know, that nice egg team fight. Sunray and egg, really five nice team fight skills. Really I personally love supports that. Oh, it's five o'clock. Well, I don't give a shit. I'm just talking about supports. Uh, I love supports that offer something beyond laning phase. Uh, spells that go through BKB, uh, reliable catch, uh, damage output. Just something. Like, whenever I see an Enchantress, like, 5, I actually get so mauled. I hate Enchantress 5. It's so fucking useless, man. Like, yeah, he's gonna throw Impetus and, like, uh, get a creep in lane. And then, like, after 5-10 minutes of laning phase, like, you're like, okay, what does Enchantress do now? Like, Enchantress actually just does nothing. So, uh, I, I enjoy seeing supports like Clockwork and Phoenix because they provide something beyond the laning phase. Uh, Life Seal coming out before Zero. <laughs> Sammy Boy. <laughs> Sammy Boy's probably been watching my stream. I, I noticed that a lot of people are picking Life Stealer carry now. Really and I. Uh, Life Stealer wasn't really buffed. So, what gives? Oh, the Mei Sao has been playing it on stream a lot. And he said it's a good hero. Oh, and all of a sudden, you got Matumba Man. You got Sammy Boy. You got all these pub players picking Life Stealer all of a sudden. Oh. I don't <sighs> just, just funny. That's all. Just funny. Just funny. Uh, same boy can't come with his own thoughts, so that's interesting. Uh, we have Quincy Crew contemplating their next pick. Um, wondering what they're gonna pick here. What do they need? They need a uh, sexy hero, and they pick Lena. I knew it. Their lineup lacked sex appeal. Four Zoomers has Windrunner and Dark Willow, and then you have Clockwork and Phoenix. Like, bestiality is against the law, first of all, so Phoenix is out. You can't fuck a bird. Like, you just can't. So, and then they have Legion Ten Commander. And remaining. Legion Commander is, like, kind of butch, if I'm being honest. Like, look, she's an armor. Remaining. Like, I mean, come on, I'm not going to beat her out of the bush here. Like, uh, you're lacking the sex factor. And you know sex sells, so yeah, I'm really glad they picked Lena. That was a good pick. Uh, but in all honesty, not really a good pick, because Life Seer is really good versus Lena, I feel, so that's actually a giga weird champ for me. I actually think Lena's poop versus Life Stealer. So that's a, uh, Elsie is a boy? No, it's not, it's a girl. What the hell? My man needs to chill. Yeah, you need to get banned. Let's see. 24 hour timeout for you, sir. Get out, get the hell out of here. Racist streamer. Okay, we got some real retards in here. Uh, yeah, four zoomers picking up a hero here soon. Um, what do they need? They probably, I mean, the Pangolier is still there. I know Gunner plays a mean Pangolier. Lucas Lucas actually watched a replay of Gunner's Pangolier one time and said, there's nothing I would improve on this guy's Pangolier. And if a guy who plays 5,000 games of Pangolier cosplays as Pangolier in real life, probably wants to date Pangolier in real life. If he says that about your Pangolier, you're probably doing something right with the hero. Uh, we have a Magnus pickup here there from 4 Zoomers. Remaining. Mag Life Seal are very strong. You have the Infest Bomb potential. Uh, yeah, life Seal has really high attack remaining. speed, so like the bonus damage that he gets is Dire very nice. Because uh, he already has the attack speed, he has the BKB, so he really makes use of the empower. It helps him clear. It's a really nice combo. Really nice. Uh, the one downside to Magnus Lifestyle is that when you infest, you actually lose in power. It's really annoying. So if you do go for infest bombs, uh, the Magnus has to reapply the empower. Let's see how many times this game they remaining. use a infest bomb and don't reapply the empower. That's like a high IQ thing. Uh, high IQ remaining. thing. So I think they'll fail it a lot. Um, Dire team ban. We have Dro Ra really Dro Ranger ban. I guess they do have a save, kind of. They have a clock is like counter initiation with the hook. They have the Legion heal, Phoenix heal. Maybe, maybe it was good draw ban. Interesting, very interesting. It's definitely good versus. I like it versus Winter on Dark Willow. I think it's very good versus those kind of squishy supports. If you get a silence off, they're kind of fucked. Uh, not sure how I feel about it versus Magnus though. I mean, I think Drill Ranger's problem 
yeah, to go on a little tangent, is that she doesn't like heroes that get on top of her. She wants her space, like social distancing, you know? So, for Azuma's lineup kind of lacks heroes that get on top of the Draw Ranger. They're both their supports are very far back. Uh, Life Zero doesn't have a Blink Dagger, and only Magnus, you know, can do the jumping. Ten right seconds remaining. So. Um, anyways, we have four Zoomers. Last pick, we got the Centaur ban out. Uh, I like it. They they need a uh, four Zoomers needs a frontliner Dying here. They need some some hero that goes in. And there's the Tide Hunter, Mason. You called it. You said frontliner, but what you really meant was Tide Hunter, Mason. You're on fire. Your analysis is on point. Your licks are on point. Your humor is hilarious, Mason. You are one of the best casters in the gosh darn world, and I don't swear. So I'm PG. Remaining. So the sponsors can line up like McDonald's, Taco Bell. I see you guys. Five Hit me with that sponsorship. Uh, Quincy Crew with their last pick here. Do that. I don't think they have much time. Yeah. Okay. Uh. We have Medusa. Choose your hero. Wow, that's a really good pick. Um, is it? Oh, actually, may I, I may have just lied. Hmm. <laughs> it's good in the sense that he should have a good lane. It's bad in the sense that it doesn't do anything to the supports of four zoomers. Medusa can't get on top of those supports. Um, can't really follow up damage that well either, right? Like that, you have the duel. What's Medusa gonna do? I mean, I guess Medusa can press ult and then stun them. Hey, so maybe, maybe you're wrong. I, I just look at Medusa as like, it's okay this game. I don't think it's an amazing pick. Because the upside of Dark Willow and Windrunner is that they're kind of, they're squishy, but they kind of move around and fight a lot. They can get off a uh, Windrun and like, uh, a Reality Willow Rift or whatever it's called. So... I, I, I think the pick's okay. I don't hate it. I don't love it. I think it just gives supports on four zoomers more play options. Um, they're not really worried about getting bursted too much and whatnot. So, intro. We'll see how this game plays out. If I was to tip the fedora towards one draft right now, I'd probably tip the fedora in Quincy Crew's direction. I think their team fighting, if they get off all their spells, I think it's uh, I think it's too good. I think getting off the egg into duel, uh, duel into stone gaze, uh, hook shot into Lena combo. I think they have so many play options, team fighting wise. They also have pick off. They have solid damage. Um, they're very tanky. Uh, all the heroes except for maybe Lena are considered pretty tanky. So yeah, if I was to give a tip of the fedora, I'd probably give it to Quincy Crew honestly. Anyways, guys. Let's get your hype chance out. Let's get your pog chance out. Let's get those like a pog chance. We have four zoomers. Let's go into crazy. And we have Easy for Leslau in the off lane playing his famous leech commander. Easy for Leslau. Easy for Leslau. On mid lane, we have Quinn. This man needs no introduction. You know this guy is the king of soy. Quinn Callahan. Uh, Mojo storms out. A Chad in real life, a Chad in game, highly touted since the early days of 2013 as one of the best, most versatile players in North America. You should see his Instagram too. This boy's lifted bitches left and right. We got you are people make fun of you. People are like, oh, you're not as good as Sumail. You're not as good as Sumail. And while that may be true, you are himself is. I have the utmost respect for you are one of the best carry players in the world. Everyone's tipping him. They know this guy is literal sex icon in the scene. And then we have SVG. I mean, I don't know. Fuck it, Sweetie. Nah, no, I'm just kidding. But then on four side of four zoomers, we have a bunch of soy chambers. I'm gonna name this team Soy Milk R Us. Soy Milk R Us. Uh, Husky's toying him, and Monkey's are trying to soy out. Oh yeah, look at the soy. SVG is so low, but they're like, oh, Soy Champ. Relax, guys. Soy Champ. We can't kill him. Looks like a shackle shot. Oh, Taiga, AK, Ocean, kind of biffing the blunder there. No, wait, no stun? Is that is that normal? No, no stun on Lena? I feel like, whoa, 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 I don't know about that one, Chief. I feel like every, all of your Lena goes stun. I'm, maybe I'm not understanding here. I mean, I'm not going to question Quinn Callahan because he's one of the greatest, uh, he's one of the greatest mid laders of all time, but uh, I feel like uh, every time I watch Alina, they go stun. So this is some new meta shit he's maybe doing right now. It did get buffed, it looks like, in the 7.27B, so maybe he's abusing the buff. 
Maybe he is abusing his buff. So I'm doing everything today, guys. I'm solo casting. I got to keep the hype up. I got to analyze the game. And I also got to do play-by-play. -play. So I may get a little winded. That's why I try to save my energy right here. Anyway, he's got a shackle shot on SVG. You are following up with the Mystic Snake. Ocean has no wind run, but he does have a Fairy Fire. Fairy Fire is becoming pretty meta, as you see. We got Fairy Fire 4, Fairy Fire 1. Do we got a Fairy Fire on this guy? No, we don't got a Fairy Fire on this guy. And also, Gush. Very meta. Uh, you, Tidehunters of old used to go like... Kraken Shell or Anchor Smash, but no, now you go, uh, and Ocean's dead. Ocean's just dead, just like that. We have our first blood, and it goes to you, our clap, clap, clap. First blood for my boy Yatizi in the top lane. Beautiful stuff. Uh, one thing I will say is that, dude, my camera work is actually pog. It costs that first blood. We're gonna keep going, though. Um, I played Medusa myself. This guy's a pretty, or she, she is a pretty underrated laner. Uh, I think she got her base damage buff last patch. Uh, yeah, she just she's really tanky. Mystic Slice snakes a nice nuke and it provides a slow. And she has pretty good base damage for a range hero. Uh, she's really solid laner in my opinion. Very underrated in that regard. We have Quint. This should be a st uh, not a stomp, but definitely Lena favored. Magnus doesn't really lose a whole lot of lanes, but if it, Magnus was to lose a lane, I could see it being to Alina. Lena, one of the best uh, melee bulliers. And Ocean, again, just getting caught out. What the actual Froach concern, Ocean? How much did you bet on yourself this game, sir? Like, what are you doing? Yawar! What are you doing? Oh, with the bay with the fairy fire. Oh, uh, you know Yawar is too good. And we got the South from SVG, a classic five minute. Let's catch that bottom line. Let's see what's happening here. Semi boy. Semi boy. Owning Leslau for time being. Looks like a little bit of a net worth lead there. Um, Legion vs. Nakes is... It's kind of Nake's favor, but Legion can get plenty of farm. It's not like uh, Nake's owns the Legion or anything, so... I expect Leslau to have a decent start here. I, I don't expect him to get fucked up Radiant at all in this lane. He, he should definitely get his. Attack. He should not really struggle. I can see Monkeys Forever struggling, though, in this lane. Like I said, Medusa very underrated later. And it looks like Taiga... Or Taiga, I don't want to... That's a slap in the face to Liquid Taiga. I don't want to say that. Uh, Ocean kind of attack. dropping the biscuit here a bit on the top lane. Uh, feeding away some kills and swinging the swinging an already like questionable matchup uh, even more. And there's the snake last hit plus harass. You are, you're too fucking good, man. You're too fucking good. Uh, Quint Callahan has his bottle. Gonna nuke out this wave, I'm sure. We got a little lull in the action. Let's switch to last hits, right? We don't need to see net worth right now. I switch over to net worth at five minutes. That's what every caster should do. Switch over to net worth at five minutes. Don't do it any earlier. And don't do it any later either. Mid lane, Quinn looking to pressure under the tower. Nothing should really happen bottom, so I'm kind of ignoring it. Both teams should just kind of farm. Dyer's Top is where the action's at. Monkeys forever? If this snake bounce! No. No, no, no. SVG may be going down here. It may be the return of the Mac, as I have always said. He has stick. He's gonna die. He's gonna die. He's gonna die 100%. No stick. <laughs> the shackle shot to interrupt the animation of the snake. And you are getting turned on here. Fairy fire. Wind run. Oh. <laughs> Insane gameplay. I heard the salve. The salve went off to heal up someone. I don't know who it was, but that was insane no gameplay, actually. You know, small stuff like that that really adds up. No. When, when I say, like, mechanics and stuff, are uh, that's, that shit's of the old, right? Like, uh, everyone's pretty the same mechanically wise speaking uh you know decision making the decision to man up the decision to go back the decision to fight the decision to not fight all these things add up ladies and gentlemen they, they are what makes a great player a great player and that's why i'm considered by many of my peers as one of the best players in the scene because i do all those little things to perfection i do all those little things to the utmost perfection that's why my peers uh hold me in such high regard uh, we have the chainmail though on Lizla. I don't want to like this is this isn't about me. I'm that stun was close. Quinn Callahan in between the towers. I call this guy a soy champer, but he's looking like an alpha male at the moment. Fortified. Playing him, yeah. We have a TP. I don't know about letting this happen. We have a TP. Looks like they're just playing for the five minute runes. Oh, Quinn or SVG, you don't want to die here, man. You're gonna get scared back in the tower here any second. Is this worth? A gunner, gunner's gonna go down for sure. There's no way, right? We have we don't have a shackle, but Quinn's gonna go down too, right? Yeah, Quinn's definitely dead. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's definitely worth it. I'm gonna be honest. Okay, 
So they got the bounty run and uh, they got a kill on the four Zimmers mid laner. But Ocean just got a sh dude. He's almost level five. He's four and a half. Five minutes, four and a half. You know why that's so good? Like that means that Husky can take Tome. Like this, this dude should be level six by ten minutes, right? He should be level six. So that means Husky can take the Tome uh, at ten minutes, and they're gonna have two supports for probably level six. That's I cannot stress to you how big of a deal that is. That's something a lot of these casters don't talk about. You know why these casters don't talk about stuff like that? Because they don't actually play Dota. They don't. They don't play, so they don't understand. They don't get it. They're not. They're not like us, guys. You and I, we play Dota. The casters, they sit there on their fat stacks and their privilege, and they don't play shit. But me, I'm out here slumming it. I'm out here playing these puzzles. I'm out there hablas es inglés. Like I'm out here doing the fucking work. Anyways, uh, Quinn SVG. Um, we got some, uh, we got some action in the top lane here. Uh, so let's switch over to net worth, like I said. Uh, you are looking strong. Looking real strong. 3k net worth at 6 minutes. That's fucking beautiful. That's so fucking nice. Zen Blackham, thanks for the, uh, thanks for the Twitch Prime there, buddy. Um, but yeah, you are looking fucking strong as hell. And the bottom lane, like I said, it's pretty even, right? Lelis and, uh, Siren Boy, neck and neck right here. Uh, midweekly Yeti, thanks for the stop. Oh my god, I missed the kill. Quinn, Ca parenthesis. Quinn Callahan just chatting it up, it looks like. Is he gonna protect his catapult? Is he gonna protect his catapult? Is he gonna protect his... Ah, okay, that's your choice, Quinn. That's your choice, man. Don't protect your catapult. Do what you gotta do, man. Uh, I would have I personally tanked some tower shots for that thing, but I can understand. Maybe he felt uh, threatened by a gunner. Uh, sorry I missed that kill, guys. It won't happen again, I promise. It really won't happen again. Uh, SVG just scouting. He really needs boots, man. Clock without boots is a bit of a sad go. Just kind of running around and I guess trying to see... They have a ward though, just check if Quinn or um, Gunner takes any of these stacks. Gunner getting his bot refilled. Wraith Band? Ah, I see people do this, man. I don't think it's good. Eight, level 8 to 6, by the way. Level 8 to 6. Quinn Callion is is literally sharding on this kid. Quinn is actually just sharding on the mid lane right now. And SVG coming in, we got some... Yeah, they're trying to pressure the tower because they know. They know this Magnus is so weak in comparison to this Lena. You they know. So they're really trying to make sure that uh, Gunner can't catch up. And this is the problem, man. This is the problem with NA versus NA right now. SVG is probably going to go down here. I can't really see him living. Just a little... I'm not really sure what he's doing here, honestly. I really don't know because they have the ward, right? They have the ward. So why does he need to play there like that? I don't know. I mean, SVG is a big brain. So I'm not going to really say like that was bad or anything, but... A little bit of a noggin scratcher, if you will. Um, yeah, this is the problem with NA, though, as I was saying. Uh, I feel like everyone who plays versus Quincy Crew, they just lose their lanes. Because Quinn Callahan just absolutely... Do like, dude, this is embarrassing. Like, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. This happens every game. It doesn't even matter the matchup. Quinn just smashes Gunner mid lane every single time. Every single... It, it can be like Void versus Emperor, Lena versus Magnus, like Quap, Quap versus Puck. I don't fucking know. It doesn't fucking matter. Every single time, Quinn just dominates. And it, like, makes the matches so lopsided. Uh, four Zoomers have to play from behind, right from the get-go. It's pretty fucking hard. It's pretty fucking hard, dude. Uh, anyways, uh, Monkey's Forever, level 6, holding mid lane. Has level 6 but no Ravage. My voice is cracked. Soy champ, Mason, soy champ. Uh, they really want to pressure this mid tower, and I, I think this is the right play. This is definitely the right play. Quinn is really strong, so definitely pressure the mid tower. Uh, Monkey's Forever could be- Monkey's Forever is definitely dead. Yep, pushback really nice. Ravage? Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Say, say what, dog? Oh, Monkey's Forever. Leslau running into the- Oh, Leslau. Ooh, you ran into a bramble maze there, little buddy. Oh, Gunner's you- Wait, Gunner could go down? Yeah, Gunner's probably gonna go down here. Oh my god. Dude, what the fuck is happening? What the fuck is happening? The sun ray from hell? The sun ray from hell? MSS picking up another kill. Leslie out to fall though. I mean that's hella worth it though. You got you got a Ravage come out. You got a Gunner, the Soy Champer died. Dude, he's 5k versus 3k. Enough said. Enough said. Mid tower down as well. Enough said. Like holy tower shit. Holy shit. And the uh, top tower not going down. Sammy boy uh, came up here, but Yuar can easily hold this. If, like if it just Nakes up here, man, like. You are can easily farm jungle, come back, farm jungle, come back, and it is no problem. And uh, Quinscrew has a mass 3k gold at 10 minutes. That's huge, man. That's huge. Uh, you are going for a Dragonlance. A bit of a soy build. Um, 
but I understand, understand. You know, when you play versus lesser opponents, uh, one thing that you, one thing that uh, people say is like, don't just play your game, man. Just pl play solid. Play solid. You don't have to do anything crazy. You don't have to try some crazy draft. Just do what you gotta do. You know, pick Quinn a, a mid laner that's gonna win his lane. Pick him a you know lane winner. You know, go from there. You know. Build normal items. You don't have to like build fucking Midas, uh, Midas Mask of Madness, Blink Scotty or something. Anyways, I missed this uh, kill down here. Uh, Mason, you gotta wake up a little bit, baby. You gotta wake up. Um, Quinn Callian, taking some CS down here, cutting the wave. Uh, they should defend this tower though. They are really strong. Yep, there goes the TP. I was gonna say, there's no way they give them this tower, right? Fat kid party, thanks for the sub, man. The Quinn Callian going in. We have the counter initiation from Husky. Husky, big ultimate right there, but no follow up. A big ultimate, my ass, Mason. SVG really needs, really needs to get six, though. SVG needs to give him a lane. Dude, someone give this guy a lane. Come on. Give him mid lane. Give him mid lane. No? Okay. Uh, Sammy Boy is going Midas, it looks like. Where is his courier? He has. Is this Midas? Where is his courier? How do I see where his courier is? Ah, oh, that's the ultimate cringe. Midas on Lifestealer. A fucking joke. A fucking joke. Midas on Lifestealer. That's not how you play this hero, dude. That's not how you play this hero. Anyways, we have some action in the bottom lane here. Um, he has Ravage. They should fight this. They should not give this up, dude. No, what are you? Maybe it's because you have a Midas on your life so you don't want to fight. I, I I can't believe they gave that tower up. Monkey's forever positioned himself correctly, and no one is fighting. You got a skewer to farm creeps, running at them. With, if you want to run at them, why would you buy a Midas? If you want to run at them, why would you buy a Midas? You want to run? You want to fight? Why would you buy a Midas? Why would you buy a Midas? Why would you buy a Midas? If you had armlets, and Leslas would be dead, and you would not have died. I don't understand this decision making from Sandboy. This guy wants to be a pro player and he won't put up or shut up like i don't fucking get it man i don't get it like cat cats off hats off the retardation everywhere i don't understand man. anyways we have some uh quinn callahan going in back line here uh yules does dispel does dispel by the way so it dispels the one and the quinn callahan is the quinn callahan show it's the quinn callahan show ladies and gentlemen everyone t t g sit back sit back and enjoy the show literally quinn callahan versus the world five one five one mid lane taking towers boom bada bing ladies and gentlemen Best casting, keep it up, thanks, man. But yeah, I, I don't get it. Like, uh, I feel he could have had a he could have had an armlet, pretty much. He could have had an armlet. He could just be like, yo, yo, monkey, whoever you set up bottom, bro. I got the armlet. We're going. We're doing this. And they would have. I don't know. Maybe they would have won that fight. Honestly, Lelis definitely would have died. First of all, um, I don't think he would have died uh, to Supernova. You know, tankier. And, uh, yeah, I just, just can't say I'm a fan of Life Steer because he's a. He, he has attack speed, right? One of the one of the upsides of Midas is that it provides attack speed to heroes that don't normally get it. Um, I feel like Lifestealer's issue is that he does no damage. He's a very uh, he's a very low damage hero, so you have to build damage items on this dude. And armlets a great great source of damage. You know, you kind of low armor gives you armor. Um, yeah, I really don't like Midas on Lifestealer, man. He does not lack attack speed. He doesn't really gain a whole lot from levels either, so. Don't, don't like it. Anyways, it's gonna start har stop harping on it. Uh, SVG scouting out a little bit. He may go down here though. He could hook shot away. Hook shot away. No, looks like he's probably gonna die. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good try, man. Good try. Uh, close one crap. Up. You are just farming up down here. Uh, 8k now worth at 14 minutes. An absolute beast. An absolute beast, man. Fucking sick stuff, my boy. Sick stuff, my boy. I taught Yuar everything he knows, by the way. If you were to walk up to Yuar in one of his bars, like he's constantly bar hopping the Chicago area. If you were to walk up to Yuar and go like, yo, Yuar, man, what? How'd you become so good at Dota? Like, I remember you like really bad. And then you kind of became good. What What? What gives? Because I want to be good too. So how, how'd you do that? Yuar probably be like, uh, yeah, I just watched Mason replays for 24 hours a day and watch his stream all the time. And I just became really good. I'm just like, yo, okay. Yeah, so he owes a lot of his success to me. Uh, one of the young wards that gives back to, uh, gives due to the old gods. I'm one of the old gods, you know, in the World of Warcraft, there's like Cthune, yogg Saron, and stuff. Like, I'm one of the old gods of Dota. Like, me, Puppy, Karoti, <laughs> I can't even say with a straight face. Uh, we have some smoke action here for the 15 minute rune. We have a blink dagger on Lelis, he's ready to catch anyone that comes in this area. Uh, Gunner, go on first item, blink. I... 
God, he is so poor, man. This is not what you want to see from mid lane Magnus. Uh, you do not want to see this at all. You really, sh this is way too poor for Magnus. He flash farms with his empower, so to have him like at such a low net worth, not even by a Magnus' standard, just by a general mid standard, it, it just. It's like it's like a mini alchemist. You want him to be ahead of everyone. A good th a good benchmark, a threshold. He's like a baby alchemist. He farms fast. He should be ahead of people. He should not be behind people. From mid lane at least, not necessarily from off. Uh, we have the blink dagger. I think maybe we'll get a smoke here. I'm pretty sure after we clear this camp, we're gonna get a smoke. Probably go to the mid lane. Oh, they're drawing arrows towards top. I really think they should just collapse on mid. Monkeys forever push it. They got a catapult. They do a little loop like this maybe. The Infest. Guys, remember what I talked about. Will they re-empower the Life Zero after he comes out of the Infest? We're going to have a big team fight here. I got to lick the chops. Got to make sure the lips aren't dry for this one. Ward behind the tower. They see everything. Magnus RP. No, bad communication. But it does not matter. Nice, nice, nice. Nice smoke. Really nice smoke. You get the blink and you go right away. That's why four zoomers is actually... I shit on these guys a bit, but they have good understanding. Gunner gets those team items and boom, he goes. Uh, mid tower, I can't really see them defending this too well. Magnus blinks in because instantly Yule's a bit of a four weird. A uh, big Ravage crap on one, two, three. Uh, Ravage, but it doesn't do anything. No one was around, Monkeys Forever, good sir. Get the egg off. Mo this thing was definitely dead. If the summer is going to take care of him. I'm not going to watch that shit. We have a lead. We have a. Oh, missing spells left and right from both teams. The Ravage whiff, the stun whiff. We got a bunch of. The hook shot whiff. The this is the NA Dota I know and love, ladies and gentlemen. Beautiful cacophony of fails. But uh I did like this though. I like this play from the four zoomers. They smoke out, ward behind the tower, boom, quick pick, and uh took the tower as well. So while it was a bit of a fail fish, they did do some things right. The concept the concept was right, which is important. Sometimes the execution is off, but as long as the concept is solid, you know. It's it shows promise. Monkeys forever teeping in. May just die though. He like he has Kraken shell, but dude, like what in the actual fuck sauce was that? We have a shackle, but definitely no follow up, right? And SVG, they're 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 hungry, man. They know they're so far ahead. And Quinn Callahan charging forward. Lelis looking for a duel. Easy for Lelis now. Let me duel that. Let me duel that. And he got the duel damage. He's up to 30 damage now. Sadly, we don't have any more catch, so that's gonna be it. They're gonna take this tower and retreat. Sammy boy. Midas just oh guys guys I got guys I got my Midas I need to farm a little bit more I'm not ready to fight yet don't fight just dodge them okay Mason you're actually being a little bullyish right now you need to relax you need to relax with that shit um he's going for Deso I mean I like Deso on the live show I will say that uh, I saw him he did have a uh, MKB queued up I like Deso more than MKB on Life Stealer I don't know why I mean I guess it's just cheaper right. Oh, that's a really good item for life stealer. Yeah, nice. That's really good. The magic resistance is quite broken. Um, I want to talk about it really quick, actually. Uh, after this, uh, shackle, easy shackle. Oh, he doesn't have it yet. Gunner running away. Oh my God, is this intentional or? Okay, never mind. He's just dead. Now nah, this dude's dead too. They're all dead. Uh, okay. I mean, dude, this, this, uh, uh, let's just be honest. Let's just be honest. This game's over. But let's just be real for one second. I'm not gonna be like those other casters who like sit here and they cast a game like, oh man, but they have uh, they have some really big team fight ultimates, and if they just get them off, is a no, no, just no. This 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 game's over. Um, so that's a great segue to what I actually want to talk about. Uh, Vambrace strength gives 10% magic resistance, which is interesting because. Agility gives Radiance 10 courage. attack speed, and Intelligence gives Spell Amp. And that actually reflects what Null Talisman gives. It gives 3%. It's two, a Vambrace is two, uh, is two components, is two Bracers, it's two Wraith Bands, two Null Talisman. Um, let's do this while I talk about it. So it gives like, it gives its components basically. But Bracer does not give magic resistance anymore. It hasn't for a while. And even when it did get magic resistance, it got nerfed. The value itself got nerfed, but the Vambrace value didn't get nerfed. So the strength Vambrace is just... Why can't I... The strength Vamp... Oh, it's because I'm on player perspective, I think. Man, Mason, ma fucking wrap it up for a weird buddy. Uh, anyways, the strength Vambrace gives magic resistance. It's really broken. 
It's super broken. Super, super, super broken. Yeah, even if you're an agility hero, man, like sometimes you get into a team fight, they have a lot of magic team, they have like a, a necrophos or something, you just leave it on strength. Get that magic resistance. Uh, anyways, uh, you are. Wait, you are didn't take Aegis? Interesting. He's going butterfly next. Like, dude, I'm gonna be honest. I, I don't really see. I don't, I don't really see the win condition here, ladies and squirms. Uh, I think what their play option is ultimately is uh, skewering you are into high ground right now. If Quincy Crew gets too cocky and tries to go high ground, maybe maybe they can make some magic happen. Uh, monkeys are dead. Oh, hold the phone! You got her big, Karishi! Holy strong champs! We have a game in our hands, ladies and gentlemen. That's the Aegis down. I may have spoke too soon, and you—he has no BKP. Oh my goodness, Mason! Wait, we have the we have the stone gaze though. We have the, he's dead. The rage is about to fall. Out. Oh, miss time to stun! Miss time to stun! Miss time to stun! Oh, huge shackle, and uh, SVG just goes down. We have a little bit of act. Where's Gunner? Oh, he doesn't have skewer yet? Wait, wait, what the? He just blinked in, or what? What just happened there? That was that was really good by four zoomers, but they got a little... Dude, like, when you're in this position, man, you gotta chill. Like, you use the RP, you use the Ravage, you, you get what you want, then you gotta chill a little bit, baby. You gotta chill a little bit. And you are. Instant reaction. Manta styles the shackle. Mwah, perfection, perfection. Yeah, Medusa Stone Gaze counter initiation really, really nice. Like I said, the team fight from Quincy Crew is really nice if they all get off their spells. So, yeah, that was uh, that was unfortunate. They had a good uh, counter initiation from Quint from Four Zoomers, but they just they stuck around too long after they had already used all their spells. Semi Boy getting a little too aggressive, I'm afraid. Just a little too aggressive. Uh, anyways, we got a butterfly done on Medusa. Took the racks, right? Yeah, took melee racks. Um, yeah, Quinn's about to have a BKB, a really big item. Doesn't really save you versus the physical damage in the RP, though. So that is one thing we have to watch out for. If he gets RP'd and the uh, life zero starts hitting him, <coughs> could be trouble if we don't have a hook shot to kind of interrupt that damage output. Sammy boy going top lane now. Now, yeah, now you see the butterfly. Yeah, I, I think, uh, I don't like not having an HP item, though. This is like a very glass cannon build. He doesn't have an arm lift for HP and the uh, armor. Um, he doesn't have a halberd versus two range heroes. Like, it's two glass cannon, but, you know, he's in a rough spot, right? So, maybe he feels compelled to build this damage. Feels compelled. And, uh, yeah... Quinn, you are wasting no time. They know they know how far ahead they are. And all, the only thing they really have to watch out for here is a skewer deep into the base. The only thing that can turn this is some skewer. Like right now, I wouldn't mind seeing a skewer into Bramble, but they've already wasted their Bramble. You are feels like the king of the fucking world. Literally does not give a hoot. Oh, a double RP here? Oh, there's the skewer. Do we have a Bramble? No Bramble? Oh, that's a really nice ultimate, though. Kind of separates him from the rest of the team. That That's good, though. That's good, though. They need to use the skewer and force out some cooldowns. So they forced out the stone gaze, which means Lifesteer can kind of play more aggressive now. And immediately, they know this, like, they have to do something, man. They can't sit back, so. They use the stone gaze and they're immediately looking, but Quincy's also like, yo, we use stone gaze. Like, literally, the only way we lose this game is if we, like, fight them without spells. So they're just kind of chilling. Setting up high ground is SVG breaking smoke really smart from them. They have a ward. Absolutely no reason to give up this ward. And uh, yeah, Ocean getting on. And we have an initiation on the back line. Sammy Boy going forward. Uh, using an open wounds, but then not hitting the open wounds. Gunner not even getting off RP. I don't know what. He blinked or something and did not press RP. I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, Sammy Boy running away because he has no rage. Uh, smart move, smart move. SVG is running in like a madman. Going to press the cogs here soon and like an easy clapper. Uh, I mean, SVG, I don't know. You're going to... I understand you're like 30,000 gold ahead, but I'm not sure about that one, Chief. They have the Ravage, they have the RP, looking to get some action going here. There's no, yeah, nice, really nice egg. There's no way. Nice skewer though, nice skewer! You are may go down here! Uh, you are may go- oh, Crap, I want to- <laughs> Okay, I can't even build it. This- Guys. The game's over. And uh, just like that, ladies and gentlemen. Just like that.
Quincy Crew rolls over four Zoomers. Really wasn't even a close game, sadly. Um, yeah, like I said, I, I kind of gave the tip of the fedora to uh, Quincy Crew in their draft. I really like their draft a lot. I think it has a, a lot of upside to it. Um, four Zoomers draft and just how they play it is just too slow. You got a mid Magnus and then you got a Midas Lifestealer. Uh, they lost their off lane. Like, they essentially lost three lanes. You lost three lanes. And I'm also not a fan of double range support. I'm going to be honest. I don't, I don't like it at all. Uh, they're squishy. They don't initiate. I don't like it. I think uh, everything was in Quincy Crew's favor. The draft, the players, the handsomeness. So, yeah, not really a surprising result. But in dominating fashion, Quincy Crew takes it 1-0 uh, in this upper bracket final of uh, the Omega League America's Division, ladies and gentlemen. Uh... I think I think four zoomers needs to um, just go back to the drawing board. I can't say this draft is good. I, I can't say this draft is good. I don't like it at all. Come back with a better draft. I'm gonna say just go from there, man. Let's just go from there. Let's come back with a little bit of better draft, like. Anyways, guys, uh, we're going to take a quick commercial break. A word from our sponsors, Pepsi, Diet Coke, 7-Up, Sprite, Sierra Mist, Grape Fanta, and a uh, little crew. We'll be right back, guys. <laughs> 